Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Agile Tester Sample Paper Discussions. We are in Chapter 3 talking about Agile Testing Methods, Techniques and Tools. And uh, we shall be looking forward to complete the rest of the activities or related questions to that of this particular chapter. So let's get started and have a look on what do we have for the set of questions today. Well, the very first question for today is question number 31 and it's going to be slightly scenario based so we will take our own time to make sure that you have a good understanding of this. So the question says you are a tester in a scrum team. You have been testing the product for several iterations and you are noticing that the error message format and the text are inconsistent. For example, when the user enters an invalid address in one part of the application, they are given the message invalid input in a red font whereas when they enter an invalid phone number they are given with a message the phone number you have entered is not a valid format please enter the phone number as whatever the format is in a blue font now if you see that there's the biggest thing what you can understand right from this scenario itself is that what is the inconsistency in the error message and the format uh, for the phone number, it's very user friendly. It gives me the full message what we need, but the color is wrong. Whereas for the address, the color is wrong. Sorry, color is right, but the message is just very crisp. That is invalid input, right? So that's the scenario what they have observed. Now the stories do not specify how the error message should appear. What should you do? So this is a clear cut scenario based so question and discussion what you're going to have with yourself to understand at this point of time what someone should be looking at to do. Now this question has no right answer, okay, which is predefined. Rather, it must be driven completely by the set of options provided to you. So make sure that you spend a good time understanding what exactly was the question and what they were talking about. And then based on that, you will have the right answer. So it's very crucial that you do not miss any single word while reading a scenario and get the context out of it before you even look at the option. Because if you start looking at the option in such questions prior to understanding the question, then the options will be very, very confusing and conflicting as well. So you may start thinking that more than one option is right because they will always give you such tricky options here. So we don't want you to get confused, rather just want to give you that tip that make sure that you have read the scenario and understood the scenario in a way that you know what exactly they're talking about. And at the same time, you should have started thinking about what would you do in general to overcome the situation, which will align you to the right answer. So let's have a look what exactly the options are trying to say. A says nothing since the stories do not specify the error message text or format. The implementation is up to the discretion of the developer. I think, uh, this could be an invalid response to this scenario. The reason is, uh, even if there is no format defined, then why are we following different patterns? Because, because given that when you have incomplete or unclear requirements, you follow a standard. And that standard should be followed throughout. It's not that just for one field you are interested to do something, and for the second field you can just do whatever you want. right? So as per a basic understanding of uh, such incomplete informations we say that we must be following certain assumption and that assumption should go in line with all other fields or throughout the application so a is not a relevant option to talk about that what we should do at this point of time just because there is no information i can do whatever i want and that too on the same page with different patterns so patterns cannot be compromised let it be crisp throughout like invalid input invalid input invalid input or be specific at every place just not that some fields are very you know precise or specific some things are just crisp so a doesn't look the right one so far b write a defect report for the first instance since that message should have more information for the user looks uh, pretty okay because i can go ahead and talk but given that there is no requirement written on it that means I don't have any expectation set on this. I may not just upfront call it as a defect, right? Because uh, it's, it's, it's in both the things, right? One, we have the second one, which is detailed, but we do have a blue color, which is not a representation of error message. So why not on that? Second point is, given that this is not a requirement mentioned anywhere, 
I cannot call it out upfront as a defect. We only call something as a defect where we say expected is not equal to actual. But here the expectation itself does not exist. So how can you just go ahead and declare it as a defect, right? So this is also an irrelevant option to be picked up for that discussion. Let's go to the C. Request a meeting with the developer to discuss the consistency problem and help guide the discussion to determine the error message standard for the project. Exactly. Right now, we don't have the requirements specified, but I can go and have a discussion with the developer to set up an expectation and standardization of these error messages so that we can fall in line, right? So you have to set the expectation as the golden rule when you have missing information and that should happen in collaboration with the developer. So you can set up a meeting to talk about it and then ask the developer to set up an expectation together so that we know what exactly we are looking for. So right now you don't have an expectation. So setting the expectation is a primary objective at this point of time in this scenario. So I feel option C is the most relevant at this point of time. Let's cross check with the D also. Appeal to the Scrum Master to intervene and instruct the developer to use a standard error message template that will force a consistent font and color for the error message of this type. I think Scrum Master is not your boss, right? As per the Scrum rules, the Scrum team doesn't have a lead or a boss who manages them or directs them or assigns the work to them. The team has the complete ownership on what exactly they will be doing, what they can handle in a sprint and be responsible for success of the sprint and failure of the sprint as well. So in that context, a Scrum Master is only a process guy, can only assist you with required help, but cannot instruct someone because it's a team decision what they want to do. So talking to the team members will help you better rather than asking Scrum Master to instruct somebody else. So in that context, I don't think D is more relevant compared to C. So in that context put together, I think we got the right answer and that is C, request a meeting with the developers to discuss the consistency problem and help guide the discussion to determine the error message standards for the project. And that would lead to the solution of this particular situation to come to a conclusion rather than, you know, getting conflicted with whatever requirements we have. Anyways, let's move on to the next one here. The question number 32, you have identified a usability risk with the mobile application you are currently testing. When the application loses connectivity with the web server, the user is not perform, informed of the problem and all information entered after that print point is lost. What is a reasonable assessment of this risk? So I think we have discussed a high level understanding of risk and assessment that is, it is determined by the level of risk. Uh, level of risk is determined by impact and likelihood. So. We are just looking forward to have some quick high level information here and uh, you can always do that. So the situation is when the application loses connectivity with the web server, the user is not informed. That means a page or a message should appear that you are disconnected and uh, no longer will be able to continue. So in that context, what's the wrong, what's the consequences which happen? The user is not informed. Thus all the information after that point is lost. So. What should I assess this risk as? So we have option A, the impact is high because the user will lose their data. The likelihood depends on how often connectivity will be lost. Okay. B, the impact is low because the user can retype their information. Uh, retyping is not considered as low because I would not prefer as a user, if I'm talking about usability, to write an information again and again, rather being informed that you disconnected yourself from the internet or server so that at least I can hold on, refresh, get connected again, and then continue writing. So my efforts will be reduced. So impact is not low. So I can cut this off right here, but let's check the likelihood is high because the original data is lost. No, the data lost is more of like an impact, but likelihood is more of like the frequency of that event to happen. So I think likelihood is better for option A along with impact, but B, Im impact is wrong and likelihood is not talking about likelihood at all. C, the impact is medium because the user should expect this type of behavior. Not at all. I don't think anyone is expecting this type of behavior, but technology driven things, we know that things can fail. So I may take into that account and say like, all right, so if it is possible, you know that the networks can go up and down 
and uh, the impact will be there for that so yes we can say it is medium the likelihood is medium also because the problem will be intermittent now i cannot make a that decision that whether the problem will be intermittent or not it has to be tested right and i would like to know how frequently the server would be uh, terminating the connections and uh, why would that happen and what would be the reason for that because there are prerequisites for an application the environment details and all so i must figure out to determine that because if you are expecting a server to be very very remote and chances are that you will have very well, very common fluctuations happening then i can make this decision but again keeping it in mind this is not something which i can consider to declare that the likelihood is also medium and d the impact is high because the user will not understand what is happening and will likely call the help desk the likelihood is low because the network connectivity is reliable and unlikely to have any issues i think <clears throat> that's again contradicting between the two options because likelihood if say it's uh, it's completely um you know dynamic or sorry it's this network connectivity is reliable and unlikely to have any issues then that's again is a prerequisite more of considerably but not a likelihood likelihood is low okay because if it is reliable and unlikely to have an issue and again i'm not making a decision on any such call that how exactly are you declaring such things right so in that context it becomes difficult to pick such things and uh, i cannot be very justifiable when i'm making a prediction right justifiable only when you have proofs to justify it so in option c and option d i'm sounding more of like a justifiable statement that means i'm aware of this this is what will happen but b is not talking about likelihood whereas a is talking about the prediction it says likelihood depends on how often connectivity will, will be lost so again i am not supposed to declare anything which i am not sure about but it does depend on certain things which i can always promote and share with the team so put together the right answer here is a the impact is high because the user will lose their data and nobody wants to write it again without any prompt information and i think you do feel exactly the same and the likelihood depends on how often connectivity will be lost because we don't have any insights on that right you cannot have those information at this point of time so put together that's the right answer anyway so we just got uh, another two questions covered from this particular discussion and we shall look forward to cover eight more questions coming up next so that's all from this particular video team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning